Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I will be talking about a condition called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. This condition was previously known as benign intracranial hypertension. Essentially, it can affect up to one to two in every 100,000 people. It has a gender bias and tends to affect females more than males. And essentially, in a nutshell, what tends to happen in this condition is the fluid which bathes the brain and spinal cord causes an increase in pressure around these two particular structures, typically because of an increase in the amount of cerebrospinal fluid, and this culminates in a collection of symptoms not limited to headaches and blurriness of vision. So if you want to learn more about this condition, please stay tuned. First be stated that idiopathic intracranial hypertension IIH can be a potentially blinding condition therefore the condition needs to be picked up early and therefore treatment can be um, implemented. The classic textbook symptoms that patients may present with include headaches which are classically worse when lying down, worse when coughing, worse when sneezing, the patient may complain of blurriness of vision or temporary losses of vision. They can even complain of double vision. And if severe enough, they can also start to affect other neurological um, aspects of their body, including their limbs. Patients can also complain of a ringing sound in their ear. In a nutshell, then, the condition is diagnosed through a combination of various different approaches. Initially, this will include a careful history to ascertain some of the core red flag features that IIH may present with in certain patients. The next stage is a careful examination to include a neurological examination and a um, ophthalmological assessment to carefully look at the optic nerve heads. And then the core investigations for IIH include a CT scan um, in the first instance and a lumbar puncture to ascertain the pressure around the brain and spinal cord that the cerebrospinal fluid is created. In terms of the eye assessment aspect of the examination, this will include imaging of the optic nerve um, in the back of one's eyes. The second component will include carefully looking at the nerves a visual field assessment will also be performed, actually establishing what one can see on a reading chart and also assessing one's colour vision will form the core aspects of the eye examination. What causes IIH? This is a very good question and the answer to this is we don't really know. That's why it's called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. One of the fundamentally important aspects of working an individual up whom is suspected to have IIH, it is important to rule out other conditions that could be causing, for example, swollen optic nerve heads. This is not limited to things such as masses inside one's head. What we do know is there can be certain risk factors that can increase intracranial pressure. These include excess vitamins, for example, vitamin A, um, also um, the use of steroids. The fundamental component of managing patients with IIH is to lower their intracranial pressure, make them less symptomatic, and also try and halt the progression of any damage to their optic nerve heads and therefore their vision and visual function. One of the very fundamental core aspects of managing a patient with IIH is weight control and management of this. In addition to this, um, medical treatment will include tablets which classically try and offload fluid from one's body including the CSF and this will help to relieve some of the pressure. But every medication comes with side effects and diamox or acetazolamide comes with several potential side effects including potential tingling, a potential metallic taste in one's mouth and also it can cause and contribute to kidney stones. In terms of medical treatment and weight loss, if these two approaches are unsuccessful in managing one's pressure, 
then surgical options may need to be entertained. If a surgical approach is being entertained, the vision is at threat and therefore this radical step is needed. Thank you for watching this video about IIH. I hope you have found it useful and have learned a bit about some of the symptoms that patients can present with, some of the causes that can contribute to the condition and some of the approaches to managing this condition. If you have found this video useful then please as ever do click the like button, do subscribe to my channel and do click the bell icon to stay up to date with my latest releases. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.